A judge is expected to rule later today if former President Trump and two of his adult children have to testify under oath for a probe into the family's company. New York Attorney General Letitia James is running the civil investigation. She's looking into whether the Trump Organization engaged in fraudulent business practices. Lawyers for the former president, Donald Trump Jr. and Ivanka Trump, argued their clients should not have to comply with their subpoenas. Mr. Trump has repeatedly criticized the Democratic Attorney General's probe, calling it political. And to discuss this, we want to bring in Jessica Levinson. She's a CBS News legal contributor and professor at Loyola Law, Law, Loyola Law School. Jessica, welcome. Before we get into today's hearing, first, bring us up to speed on this investigation. What exactly is the attorney general looking into and what have we learned so far? Absolutely. I think you laid it out pretty well, which is the attorney general is looking into potential financial uh, discrepancies that could lead to civil fines and or we know the attorney general is working with the district attorney and or criminal violations. And specifically what we're talking about is whether or not the Trump organization said that the value of properties was really high in order to get loans, that they inflated the value of property to get loans. And then they said, you know what, and it's really low in order to get favorable tax treatment. It's a fairly complicated investigation, but I think it boils down to that. Were you lying about the valuation being too high and were you lying about the valuation being too low? In terms of where we are, we know that the attorney general's office now is working with the district attorney and that there may be both civil penalties uh, that are on the table and potentially criminal liability. And that, of course, brings us to today, which is the attorney general going to court and saying, we have subpoenaed the former president, two of his adult children. We need to hear from them in order to obtain testimony and documents that are vital for this investigation. And so, judge, please compel them to talk to us. OK, so, Jessica, I'm glad you're talking about today's hearing because I'm curious what arguments the lawyers for the Trump family are expected to make and where do things stand? So they made a number, this is a two hour hearing, they made a number of arguments that essentially boiled down to their, the idea that the attorney general is improperly working with the DA or because she's working with the DA, that it's improper to enforce these subpoenas, to compel the witnesses to testify. And what they said is that it would force the former president and his two adult children, Ivanka and Donald Trump Jr., that it would force them to basically be subject to impermissible constitutional problems. And specifically, they said that because the attorney general is working with the DA, that they would have to, if they didn't want to answer for the attorney general, invoke their Fifth Amendment privilege, and that you can draw negative inferences in a civil investigation when you invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege. And that if the AG is working with the DA, what you really need to do is impanel a grand jury and in New York, unlike most other states, if you have a grand jury, you call people to testify before a grand jury, you need to offer those people transactional immunity. And what they were saying here is, look, this is basically being hauled in front of a grand jury, and therefore my client should get some sort of immunity. I listened to the judge's response, I listened to the judge's clerk's questions, and I suspect in three hours the judge will say no dice to those arguments. Mm. Well, as we wait to hear about that, Jessica, earlier this week, the Trump Organization's longtime accounting firm broke up with the business. It said it could no longer stand behind a decade of financial records. How significant is this for the attorney general's probe? Really significant. And the reason we found out about it is because the attorney general in the filing said, look at what's happened. Mazars has said we're backing away from the Trump organization. I, you use the term breaking up. I think that's exactly right. And we can't stand by these financials. There are material discrepancies. You cannot rely on them. That adds an enormous amount of weight to the attorney general's argument here that she needs to hear from these three individuals, that they need to testify. And therefore, I think that will weigh heavily in the judge's mind here. And you heard the judge talk about that. It's, it's hard to kind of overstate, I think, how significant that is in this case and, frankly, how bad it is for the Trump Organization's arguments. And Jessica, does that accounting firm, are they worried about any kind of liability themselves? 
Um, so I'm, I'm guessing a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think the guess is yes, they are. There's a reason that they're backing away. There's a reason they said in the statement, this is in part based on our own investigation. They're trying to prove that they did due diligence, that whenever they were there were red flags, that they followed up on those flags, and that the moment that they had warning that they could no longer rely on those statements, they said, we're not part of this, we're breaking up, and you cannot rely on this. A lot of this, I think, is about trying to protect themselves. All right. Well, Jessica Levinson, thank you so much once again for your legal insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.